Welcome to teaching physical computing with Microbit. Before we get started, let's take a look at the content we will cover and the format of this course. As you complete this course, you will learn how to find materials to build and organize your classroom set, navigate and use provided resources to limit planning time and maximize hands-on learning, understand how to best debug issues in code and physical devices, and direct students to projects that will captivate their interests and give them the tools to complete self-directed projects. The format of this CodeHS course includes short videos, connections, notes, and free response questions. This course is completely online, so all you will need is a web browser. Some previous experience with the CodeHS platform and LMS is helpful, but certainly not required. This course is completely self-paced. You'll work through modules online, which will take a total of approximately five hours to complete. You'll also have access to the CodeHS team. If you run into questions or need a topic or exercise clarified, just ask using the conversation area in each exercise to receive personalized feedback from the CodeHS team. You'll also have access to teacher forums and the CodeHS curriculum, resources, and tools. Be sure to make the most of this PD course. Lay out a schedule for completing the course. Setting some deadlines for yourself often helps ensure that you'll complete the course. Don't hesitate to ask questions. Remember, we are here to help you. And don't rush through the course. Be sure to watch all the videos and spend some time working through the course activities and reflections. All of the resources included in this online PD course are to help you teach your physical computing course. Now let's take a deep dive into the course overview. This course was designed to be taught over the course of one quarter to middle school students, though this does not mean that it cannot be used for high schools as well. For example, if you already have access to microbit devices, are thinking of bringing a physical computing course to younger high school students, such as freshmen or sophomores, or have a shorter time frame to fit the content into, this course could be a great fit. The Physical Computing with Microbit course provides a highly interactive way for students to apply programming concepts to physical devices. The course is meant to refresh and apply basic programming concepts in a physical environment. Throughout the course, students will test and run programs using a computer simulator, as well as connect circuits to run programs on their physical microbit devices. There is a strong focus on discovery learning in our physical computing course, so we encourage students to hypothesize and test what commands will do on their own through the use of what we call explorations. These step-by-step -step documents include diagrams, starter code, and questions to guide students to learn about new commands and how they are applied in their programs without being directly told by their teacher. Each lesson in the course contains an exploration, so students are constantly exploring new commands to add to their physical computing toolbox. To help you implement this course and keep track of all of the resources, we created a single document that has all the information you need to be successful. We will take a deep dive into all the resources for this course in the next lesson. The Microbit course is broken into three modules. In the first module, students learn the basics of the device by controlling the on-screen LEDs, as well as learning to attach and control external LEDs and use variables to control their programs. In the second module, students apply control structures to their programs, along with sensors and additional components. They'll use temperature, light, and distance sensors to detect attributes of an environment and have their programs make decisions based on this information. In the advanced microbit module, they will put all of these parts together. They will research and teach their peers about an additional sensor that hasn't been covered in the course, follow step-by-step -step directions to complete a more advanced system of their choosing, and develop and present a final physical computing project. I previously stated that this course is meant to refresh programming concepts for students. What this means is that basic programming concepts such as loops, functions, if-else statements, and variables will not be taught from scratch in this course. Students should have seen these concepts previously, so they're already aware of how they work before they use them with their microbit. 
There are quite a few CodeHS courses that provide this prerequisite information to students, as noted here. One important thing to keep in mind is that our Intro to Programming with Carol course does not include information on variables. So if you are using this course as your prereq, you'll need to supplement with some information about variables and parameters before students see these concepts in the Microbit course. There are a few ways these prerequisites can be implemented. Students join your class after they have taken one of the courses listed. This could be with another teacher before they joined your class, completed as a summer assignment, or as the first quarter of your course if it is a semester or year long. Another option is to have students learn these foundational concepts concurrently as they take this course. This could be provided during another class period if your students are lucky enough to have two periods of computer science or it could be threaded into the intro programming course. Let's take a look at an example of how this could work. If students are completely new to programming, you can use these semester long courses that integrate the microbit course into the intro to programming with Carol and intro to programming with Tracy courses. This enables students to learn the prerequisite skills they need to know with Tracy or Carol before applying them to the microbit. An important note, our microbit course currently uses the JavaScript language. This means that if students are learning concepts in Python with Tracy, they will need to apply those concepts to the JS syntax. The concepts are the same, and the videos and explorations within the microbit course provide students with the bridge they'll need to jump from Python to JavaScript. They came out with a new microbit in 2021, but all activities within this course can be completed with both the original and the new microbit. If you are planning on teaching this course in a virtual setting and are wondering if it will be possible, the answer in general is yes. Due to the online Make Code Simulation platform, all but one of the activities in the first two modules of the course can be simulated. The difficulty will arise when teaching the final module, as students will be creating their own projects. If you've taken or taught any other courses on CodeHS, you will notice that this course is quite different from them. Let's dive into those differences. In most other CodeHS courses, programs are written, run, and graded all on the CodeHS platform. In this course, we will be using the Make Code Editor, which will allow students to develop, test, and simulate their programs. They can then upload their programs directly from Make Code to their physical microbit devices. Though this will require students to switch between CodeHS and Make Code, it will still be 100% web based, so no software will need to be installed. The second difference to note is that in many other CodeHS courses, Teacher resources such as lesson plans, handouts, and problem guides are only available to teachers on the pro plan. Due to the unique nature of this course, all of these resources are provided to every teacher on our site. We'll cover all of these resources in the next lesson. The final big difference you will notice is that students will not initially be told how a command or a sensor works up front. They will engage in explorations to figure this out for themselves. After students explore sample programs and make hypotheses, they will then be able to watch a video which will synthesize the information we expect them to have learned to be sure all students are coming away with the same correct knowledge. Now that you've gotten a bit of information about this course, let's dive into some activities.